Hi Greg, this is Grandmaster Eugene Perlstein from ASCIIGM.com and I will be analyzing your game today. So let's take a look. After the move e4, you play c5 and bishop c4. Okay, no, normally white plays knight f3, but bishop c4 is not bad. g6, you play my beloved opening hyper accelerate dragon. Knight f3, d6. D6 is a move that I don't like. I think it's an inaccuracy. The reason why is here white gets a chance to play this move c3, bishop g7, d4, and try to get full center with those pawns. I actually believe that the best move here, or the most accurate, is bishop to g7. If white tries to gain that center space with c3, d4, the key move here is e6. The reason why is we want to meet d4 with takes, takes, d5 and after pawn takes pawn takes white does not have any supremacy in the center and black is at least equal so d6 i feel is a slight inaccuracy but white is not ambitious in this game he plays knight c3 bishop g7 d3 and this position i think black has already equalized knight c6 a3 knight f6 bishop g5 both sides are trying to develop h6 not a bad move asking the bishop his intentions obviously taking the knight is bad because giving you the two bishops is a big advantage so he drops back castles good move h3 stopping bishop g4 pin so far both sides are playing logical chess a6 very good move to me a6 is an indication that black is about to play b5 followed by queenside expansion Queenside expansion is the right plan in these dragon-like positions with the bishop on g7 eyeing that b2 pawn. So let's see what white does next. Queen c1, very sneaky move. He's setting up a battery on the pawn on h6 and good job for noticing that. King h7 is the right way to stop all of this counterplay. White castles, b5, good move, bishop a2. And now you made a very interesting decision you decided to develop the bishop on e6. Now, that allows the double pawns. After bishop takes, pawn takes. So the question is, was bishop e6 move a mistake? I actually don't think so. In general, double pawns are bad, but here, this is a cluster of pawns, right? e6, d6, e7. And the, the reason is why they're good is they control a lot of key squares in the center. You can later play e5, followed by e6, knight d4, you have a lot of possibilities. In addition, half open f file for the rook is also helpful. So I don't think your move is a mistake. And as an alternative, I could suggest you can play this move e6, which is going to lock up that bishop for good. It sort of locks your bishop up as well, but you have an option. You can do double fanchero by putting the bishop on b7, eventually playing for d5 you're going to be able to blow open the position and your two bishops will be very powerful. So let's see what he does next. So he plays natural move knight d5. Obviously, you cannot take with the knight. He takes with the pawn at fork. So you decided to take with the knight, with the bishop. He takes with the pawn. And even though you gave up the bishop pair, now this bishop on a2 is completely cut off from the game. You played knight e5, which is not bad, but I actually think knight d4 is a little bit more accurate after knight takes pawn takes this is a funny situation we have a bunch of pawns on the d file but because of the c file half open rook c8 there's going to be tons of pressure against his pawn so that was an alternative but your move is not bad at all he takes pawn takes c4 trying to get counterplay queen d6 protecting the pawn bishop e3 and now you have to anticipate his next move Pawn takes b5 is going to be double attack from the queen and from the bishop. So you play this move, interesting move, rook b8, protecting the b-pawn with the rook. Although you could have also played rook to c8, just as good, and simply preparing e4. So in the game, he plays this passive move b3, barricading his own bishop. That bishop to me looks like a big fat pawn now, and you blow open the game. I think this is the best move in the position. e4, very good job. The bishop comes alive, the knight is going gonna, is gonna to go to e4, and you're going to have two active minor pieces against one, because this bishop, like I said, is a big 
fat pawn. So let's see what happened next. After he tries to play d4, you notice that the bishop is unprotected. And you can execute this beautiful tactic. Knight g4, x clamp. Very par powerful move. Threatening queen h2 mate. He has to react. Takes, takes. And now we can simply conclude that black is better. Because just simply look at the two bishops. Bishop on d4 versus the bishop on a2. So he protects the rook, rook b1. And now you identify the right plan. You have to play against the king. Use the power of the bishop, open up more files. f5, beautiful move. He plays g5, trying to lock things up. But now you can play on the h file. Pawn takes, queen takes, and now very powerful move. King g7. With idea simply rook h8. Queen h2 mate. Honestly, I don't see a very good defense for white. So he tries to block off your queen. You gain the h file. b4, trying to go for activity. Rook h5, x clam, about to double up on the h file. c5, not a big deal because the end game is not bad for you. You're going to still attack the king. Rook takes, pawn takes, rook takes, check. And now you played an excellent game. I would probably say no mistakes maybe some inaccuracies but here you could have won on the spot with a beautiful idea rook g4 guess what there is no stopping rook h8 checkmate i think maybe he can try to play this move rook to b3 and try to hold on but honestly this is not gonna go down well for white after check rook h3 we have another check and now the king is in danger he has to go back takes and it's checkmate. So that would have been a good finish. That's all right. You played rook takes pawn, attacking the bishop. He attacks your bishop instead. And now you said, guess what? I'm going to still go for checkmate. And you execute this interesting attack, doubling up on the h file, giving up the bishop. He says, all right, I'm going to go ahead and take it. Check, king g3, rook h4. And now he is in the mate in that. Guess what? Power play. At its best. The pawn is irrelevant. If he takes on e7 or, or tries to promote, f4 is just made. And there is no stopping it. If he plays f4 himself, then this is made. If he plays f3, then this is made. And this is how the game finished. Very good job. And I hope to look at your games in the future. Keep up the good work. The only thing is, watch out for move order in the opening. That was Grandmaster Eugene Perlstein for askgm.com.